when you're first installing Windows 11. If you want to use an offline account like I do, all you have to do is just go through the first little bit, name your device. This can be anything you like. Now, once you get here, you're going to notice it wants you to sign in and there's no options for offline account. All you need to do is click on sign in and then for your username, just put user. And then for your password, put user. It's going to say, oh no, something went wrong. Hit next and now you can start an offline account, whatever name you like here. Then you'll put in your password. And now we've got an offline account. Now we're in the OS. I'm just going to do a few simple things that'll make this a lot better. First thing I do is I manually uninstall a lot of the junk that's right here on the start. Uh, you can keep solitaire if you want. I mean, that's not really bothering, bothering anybody. Turned into uh, TV Scottish or Irish, I don't know. Spotify, why is this on my system? So you just right click and uninstall. I used to run a script that uninstalled a lot of this stuff, but sometimes that did too much and removed a lot of the Windows Store functionality or Microsoft Store functionality. So now I just painstakingly uh, unpin or uninstall these things. I don't need Office either, so I'm going to uninstall that. Uh, Outlook, this is all up to you. I don't need it uninstall it, check all apps, and just make sure there's no garbage here. So that's literally the first thing I do. All right, so if you're one of those who has that Activate Windows logo in the bottom of the screen, we're going to take care of that right now with an OEM key from WhoKeys. And WhoKeys is who I've been using for a very long time to get my Windows keys, and I'll tell you why, and then I'm going to tell you how to use Windows 10 to unlock Windows 11. We can use Windows 10 Pro keys to unlock Windows 11, or we get the free upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Be sure if it's like a year from now to Google and make sure that Microsoft still accepts Windows 10 keys, but as of now, we can use these Windows 10 keys, and I'm going to show you. Uh, but first, I want to tell you why I use OEM keys. Now, Microsoft sells these keys for an exorbitant amount, and they provide the tech support when you pay like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, for a fraction of that price, you can get this, and we can make it even cheaper. So go ahead and, and sign in or, or join, and then you can join their email uh, list to get even more bonuses and, and discounts. But once you've signed up right here, let me just show you what you do. Come over here and buy one of these and use a coupon code TS25 to get 25% off. So go ahead and click on buy now. Put on my coupon code TS25. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Click apply and then check that out. Now $17.19. Leave them a little message, why don't you? So once you're done, it's gonna redirect you over to your user center. If it does not, you should come up here and click on your, your name and then click on user center. And then down here, you'll see the different keys that you've purchased. So just give it a second while it's processing. If it takes a little while, just refresh your page. With Windows 11 Pro, if you just wanna buy that directly, it comes down to $22.80. So there you go. Also got three different flavors of Office, 2021, 2019, and 2016. So if you need to unlock those at a way lower price than retail, by all means do so. All right, let's go back and take a look. There we go. We can go ahead and click on view keys and codes here to get your code. Then you click on get the key. Then you'll see your serial number right here. So you can just copy that, grab that, copy it, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, click on change your key, and then you can just paste it in there, hit next, and you will be activated. You'd have to buy that OEM key like many, many, many times to equal the price of one retail key. So I'm totally fine with doing my own tech support and I'm fine with that OEM key being locked to the hardware. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is something that you can really use that key for. And that is if you have Windows 11 Home or Windows 10 Home and you want to upgrade to Pro. You can do that very easily in the command line. So let's go ahead. All right, so yeah, it says we can upgrade right here. Click on Learn to Upgrade to Windows 11. It's gonna take us to the Microsoft Store if we wanna upgrade and be like, oh yeah, you can definitely upgrade to Windows 11 or 10 Pro for only $199. But we just got a key for Windows 10 Pro. So check this out. Hit Start, type PowerShell. All right, there it is. Just right click on that and run as administrator. Yes, let's do it. Let's tell you what to type in here. We're going to type in type in slui.exe, put a space, slash upk. Press enter. Now we need to change our product key and enter in that Windows 10 Pro product key, which will activate Windows 11 Pro. So do change pk.exe, space dash product key, capitalize like this. There we go. Put a space. And now we're going to put the product key that we just got from WhoKeys right here. All right, once we have that put in, just press enter. All right, cool. It's doing something. It's thinking. Preparing for the upgrade. Look at that. And we're good to go. Once this reboots, it's going to come back and it's going to be Windows 11 Pro, not home, and it's going to be activated. And one of the main reasons that I wanted to use Windows 11 Pro is because I'm running this on a VM, as you can see. And the VM with Windows 11 does not support remote desktop. So I cannot connect to this VM via remote desktop. I have to do it right here inside a VNC client. Updates are underway. This is going to be good. Adding features. Look at that beautiful stuff. Hey, look at that. Success. You're all done. Your PC is ready to go. Yes. <laughs> there we go. We're active. And now we can use remote desktop. Remote desktop settings. There we go. 
click on that, turn it on, confirm, and now look at this, we're opening it up. There we go. Now I have a full desktop using a remote desktop. Everything's activated, it's beautiful. No activation links in the corner, everything's unlocked, and now we can get to working with Windows 11 Pro or Windows 10 Pro. This will work on both of those. If you want to look at some like other features of the operating system, you can come over here and hit Control I and just go through this on your own. Now I'm gonna go down to gaming, Xbox Game Bar, and just turn this off. This is up to you. If you want it, you can keep it. I like to turn off the notifications for a lot of things. Yeah, I don't really need all these notifications. You can just click on system and go through different things. Now it usually goes to balanced. For desktop, that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna click on best performance. All right, so that's all we need to do here. Now this start menu is, I don't know, I don't like it. You can pin stuff here, I don't know, it's just not for me. So we're gonna change that. The first thing I'm gonna do is just mess with some taskbar settings. I don't use the task view, I don't use chat, I don't use the search box either, so I hide that. And then I come down here and click on taskbar behavior, and then I put it over in the left. Some people like it in the center, and I'll explain to you why I like it on the left. You know, Microsoft has the start button. And that's not something you'd see on Ubuntu or on the Mac OS. There's no start button. And that, you know, on, on those systems, as you add new programs, the middle bar gets bigger and bigger. The problem is, is this is always centered. So the more things you open, the more this stuff moves around. So the start button is going to continually be moving around. It's not going to be in a set spot. When it's over in the left, I know where it is. It's always right there in that left corner. And that's why I like it to be left aligned because Microsoft Windows is not like the other operating systems because it has that start button. So let's put it over in the left so that the start button is not wandering all over the screen. The first thing I can do to make Windows a lot better is download OpenShell. This is gonna replace the start menu and this is finally available over here on GitHub. Let's click on view on GitHub, download the latest version of OpenShell. There we go. Now I'm gonna install that and I'm gonna change a couple of these options and this is very important. So pay attention, especially if you're using the dark theme, you're gonna to wanna to do this. So click to install, hit next and just go through this. Yes, yes. Now right here, um, I don't want the classic Explorer. I just want OpenShell and the update. So I'm gonna click here and this entire feature will be unavailable. If you do the classic Explorer, it will change uh, the look and feel of your Explorer. And if you're wondering what, what is Explorer? It's not Internet Explorer. This is considered Explorer right here. So we don't wanna change that. Hit next here and I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Just give it a second, it'll do some stiff. Now what did that do? Well, if I click on the start button now, it'll say like, oh, do you wanna change your start button? I'll leave it alone for now. But I'm gonna pick the Windows 7 style. And that's all I'm gonna change for now. You can go through here and just see all the different customization options we have. But now we have a start menu like this. And like I said, you can change the way this looks. You can change a lot of the things and we can add all kinds of stuff here. I'm gonna uninstall some more of these things here, get rid of that. Sometimes when you uninstall things that way, the links still stay there. So you have to just remove from list people uninstall and remove from list, you know, like you can just do this on your own. And we can add things to the list later on. But this is really handy because now we can just hover over control panel and come over here and get our legacy settings for the network and all that. Uh, you can come over here and get all your legacy controls panel stuff very easily. Say I want to mess with the mouse. Oh yes, this is what I want. And it feels like I'm on Windows 7 again. I can come over and do this because it's driving me nuts right now. Enhanced pointer precision, turn that off. Oh, I can feel again. My mouse can move. It was like I've been, you noticed I've been missing things when I'm trying to click. That's because I cannot handle that uh, pointer precision. It makes me feel like I'm on a Mac or something. Next thing I wanna talk about is when you click over here, it feels like we're on a mobile operating system. When you click on the network or the audio thing, it brings up this entire nonsense with the airplane mode and everything. I'm on a desktop, I'm not on a laptop, and I'm most certainly not on a mobile device. So Windows, I'm sorry you're having an identity crisis. I'm sorry you wanna be some kind of bubbly mobile OS, but this is a desktop and I'm, I've got serious shit to do. And one thing that's nice about the older versions of Windows 11, and this also was true on Windows 10, you could click and drag files and drag them up one folder and just drag them up there on the address bar and they would go up. But let's show you. Let's update this thing because you do wanna be on the latest version mostly for security and stuff. All right, so we're gonna update this thing and then come back and I'll show you. That was a long update took a while. All right, now we're back in, check this out. This looks different up here on top now. And look what happens when I try to move things. They won't let us. We can no longer do that. So with that functionality gone, 
and this being a, a mess, I need to do something about this. Plus, I really don't like these curved edges. I like uh, rectangular edges because we're on a rectangular screen. And honestly, I don't actually care about this. So let's just get rid of all of that with one simple thing. This is the last time I'm gonna be using Edge as well. So let's go ahead and get Explorer Patcher. Explorer Patcher is really how the desktop version of Windows 11 should be anyway. So when you get to Explorer Patcher, just look over here at Releases, click on that for the latest, and scroll down, you'll see the EP setup.exe. Click on that, and we're just going to click on that to run it. Now you'll notice your Windows Explorer on the bottom here is gone now, and it's gonna come back and it's gonna look weird. Now, if you remember back in the day, this is how the functionality used to be. Whenever you would open stuff, it would open up down here. And then we would have, you know, like all the windows, you'd be able to see what they are. I kind of like this, but some people think it looks cluttered. So there's a couple different things we can do. Now, if we right click right here and go to properties, it brings up the properties for this Explorer patcher. So I'm just gonna minimize all this. Got my Morrowind background over there. Uh, now we can set up our taskbar style to be Windows 10 or Windows 11. Windows 11 gives us far fewer options. So I'm gonna leave it on Windows 10 and just change a few things. Now you can go through this on your own if you like doesn't matter what you change whatever you know just change it right here but you know i'm leaving all the search and everything off start button style i like the smaller windows 10 start better than the windows 11 start but it's up to you plus the windows 10 has a little bit of an angle it's that's who cares now this is the combining uh, all the different things on the taskbar you can set it to combine when the taskbar is full or always combine so i'm just going to always combine mine to keep it nice and clean but you can change that however you like system tray over here check out what already happened just from installing this oh now everything is separate again like it should be on a desktop computer you know if you want everything you click on the control center this all used to bring up the control center which was ridiculous so that is much better and as you can see here we have all this down here these settings uh, you can change it to windows 8 flyout if you wanted to there's all these different styles but i'm going to leave it on windows 10 because i found that to be pretty functional but you can also have it go straight to the network and sharing center so check this out put, the, put it on the network and sharing center click on this and then it brought us over here so you can have it set up to do just about anything you like but i'm going to keep it on the Windows 10 flyout. Yeah, this is really functional to me. And if I want to get to my network sharing center since I installed the open shell, I could just go over to control panel. If you find out that you're using this a lot, just click and drag it over here and drop it. You're like, you know what? I'm using that all the time. So you can put it right there. But for a lot of people, just having it here will be just fine. Okay, let's keep on going here. With the file explorer, I want to register this as a shell extension. It'll allow me to do way more. I'm also going to disable the Windows 11 context menu because that was nonsense. Here's before, you right click and you've got nothing. You want more, you gotta show more options and oh, there it is. And it's a totally different style. It's not coherent, it's goofy. So if I just check this, well, I gotta restart file explorer. Let's do that real quick. There we go, restarted. Now we right click and it takes us back to the the functional original was so much better now, the rest of this you can go through kind of on your own but since we're on file explorer i want to set the control interface from windows 11 to windows 10 and there's a reason for that now that i've set it to windows 10 open it back up this line is because it's not locked oh we can fix that so now that we're on windows 10 look i can drag and drop things again so it's so much better i can drag it to a folder up now if you want to get rid of this you're just going to need to finish setting everything up and then lock your taskbar you can also try the windows 7 command bar remember this so this one's pretty nice as well you can pick the one you like the most and also with the windows 7 one we can drag and move things just like that as well so pick the one you like i'm going to keep the windows 10 one myself there's also the windows 11 command bar that's the classic address bar. That's the previous version. So you have all these different options. If you like the Windows 11, you can keep it and just revert back to the original Windows 11. So there we go, I got my Windows 10. There we go, and then we right click here and lock the toolbars once we're finished. And there goes that line. So that's all we need. Close that up. All right, moving on down to the start menu. I disable the recommended stuff and you can change your style here. I don't really care about this. I like to leave it on 11 because I'm using the open shell but up here at the top, if you really need to get back to the old one, you can do it that way. Or if you just shift click on the start, it'll bring you back to the 11 menu. Why is this here? See, every time you do an update, it starts reinstalling crap. I already uninstalled you. Thanks Windows for helping me to death. I didn't, I, and so look at reinstalled office. Unbelievable. All right, we'll keep on going now. 
Windows Switcher. You can change the Alt Tab style. You can pick whichever one you like. Other. I get rid of these Office hotkeys, but if you're using Office, then you should have them. And I get rid of the Feedback Hub hotkey. And I also disable the rounded corners. Yes. Now when we open things, they're going to have squared off corners. And for, for me, it just looks a lot better. It looks a lot cleaner and it feels more like a desktop operating system, but that's just subjective. And then when it comes to updates, these are just updates for the regular program. I would not recommend getting the pre-release stuff, but it's it's up to you. And then these advanced options, you can go through these on your own. But that's pretty much it. Once I'm done, I always just click Restart File Explorer one more time for pretty much no reason, just to make sure that everything's stuck. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I almost forgot. Properties. With our taskbar right here, I almost forgot. Icon size. We can do small, finally, because Windows 11 didn't allow us to do small any longer. And that annoyed me to no end. So, all right, so there we've got our desktop. Um, if you want to make these things larger or smaller on your desktop, hold the control button and scroll. There we go. Let's make them about, that's fine. And Edge, you're going to go away. But before we get to Edge, I'm going to customize uh, my Explorer. Once we're in here, I'm going to click on View, and then I'm going to click on Options. Now, I want to start it with this PC, not home. And when it starts it on home, let me show you what that is. This is home. And that's not what I want. I want to go straight to my hard drive, so I click on this PC. And then when I open it up, it goes straight to my hard drive. Or my hard drives, whatever's installed there. Then on view, I come over and just do display the full path in the title bar and show the hidden files, folders, and drives. Apply. Now you also notice that there's a huge amount of space right here between all the different stuff. And that's because we're not using the compact view. Now I should have done this before I swapped it over to the Windows, you know, 10 style. So I'm gonna have to go back to Windows 11 style for just a second. So hit properties, file explorer, change this ribbon back to Windows 11. And let's do a restart, why not? Now when I open it up, there we go. We click on view, show, compact view. What did that just do? It made all this much more compact. There's not a ridiculous amount of space. The reason the space is there for a lot of people who have touch screens and the extra space gives you some room, but it's a mess if you're on a desktop operating system. All right, so there we go. And that's how I run my Explorer. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is get a few programs over at Ninite and then we'll be done. This is just like the extra credit. So I always get Firefox because it's more secure and it's not powered by Google Chrome or Chromium. I like these codec packs right here from Klight. And then I always get Notepad++. We already have the Windows Essentials. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna get for now. Just 7-zip, VLC, Firefox, Notepad++. But this allows you to get everything in one download pack. You click on it. All right, it's downloading and installing all those things. Saves us a lot of time. Now, one thing I wanna note is when you are actually on that website, I don't generally download Steam. Uh, and GOG from here, but you can download Steam and all that from here. The thing is, is it puts it into its default folder, and I like to put this into a games folder. I don't want this to go into the program files folder. So it's up to you. If you like it installed in your regular folder, you can do that. If you want to get this and just have it installed on your C drive and your program files folder, do that. But I like to install some things in a different drive or in a different folder. Get the stuff that you're okay with, and this is all the stuff I'm okay with going into the default directories. Once it's done, I don't need that. Firefox can live down here. Check that out. We can drag and drop things down here again. So many things have been disabled in Windows 11 and I don't know why. So there you have it. A much more functional version of Windows 11. It feels a lot more like Windows 10 mixed with Windows 7 now. And I haven't had very many problems with it anymore. If you're curious about the security, there's another video I've made just talking about the security options in Windows and what you should and shouldn't do. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Be sure to check it out. The last thing I want to mention is we still have our 50% off sale going on. I decided to extend our 50% off sale over at epicpants.com just to make sure everybody can get everything for the holidays that they need at a good price. Uh, these keyboards are kind of flying off the shelf. I had to buy a bunch more boxes, but they're here so I can ship out the keyboards. We have all these mice down here with flawless infrared sensors. Pick the one that fits your hand the best. This feels kind of like an Intel mouse. This is a little more right-handed and feels more like a gaming mouse, but they're all very sleek and nice. I love this controller. I beat uh, Hollow Knight with this, so you know it's responsive if I can beat Hollow Knight with this thing. Uh, mostly because I like the analog controls on this a lot more than even the Xbox or the PlayStation. So don't want to sell it too hard because it's so inexpensive right now. 50% off everything until January 1st over at epicpants.com. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you.